It's a tale that involves an Australian developer, angry protesters... Come out! You bastard! Come out! ..an old London housing estate and a council accused of being too close to the Australian developer. You know, why? Why? It, it, perception, but reality, no. At the centre of it all, the $2.5 billion redevelopment of the Haygate Estate in South London. The Haygate was built in 1974. It contained 1,200 flats rented out to over 3,000 working-class Londoners. Terry Redpath lived there with his family for 34 years. Very, very neighbourly sort of estate, good community, very mixed community. Yeah, I think it was a model, you know, for sort of uh, how people should get on, you know, in, um, in, a, in a city of states. But Terry was one of the thousands forced out of his home when the council decided to redevelop the estate. This was about fundamentally changing a part of London which was crying out for change. Zone 1 Central London, which had 1,200 poor quality council houses. In 2010, Southwark Council, under the leadership of Labor Councillor Peter John, signed a deal to develop the site with Lend Lease, an Australian company that prides itself on social responsibility. One of the first things Lend Lease did was convince the council to wind back the amount of affordable housing it would have to build, down from Southwark's standard of 35%. Only 25% of them are going to be affordable. And of that affordable, only 80 or so are going to be social rented. That's 80 as against 1,200 before. Trafalgar Place, the first phase of the development, is now complete. And new residents have moved in. Two bedroom flats now sell for over a million dollars. People can come back and they are asked, do you want to move back? when properties become available. And, and why wouldn't they want to come For back? example, how many have moved back into the first phase, Trafalgar? It's a handful of people who have moved back. In, so that's in, not many, in, is it? No, but many people are very happy. This lot certainly aren't happy. Peter John, we are coming to get you down! Yeah! These people are gathered here tonight outside the Royal Institute of British Architects where there's an award ceremony on and they're protesting about the nomination of the first phase of the Lend Lease development for an architecture award. But they're protesting about something bigger. They're concerned that working class communities are being forced out of London. So it's ruining communities, you know. You might think, people might think, well, they can just move somewhere else. But, you know, that costs money, it's a lot of upheaval, you get dragged away from family. Many of the leaseholders who um, used to live on the Haygate estate have not been able to afford to live in the area. So many of them have gone to live as far afield as um, East London, Kent, uh, Essex. Well, this, this is where we uh, moved to. Terry Redpath was one of those forced out of London. In 1986, he bought a 125-year lease on his three-bedroom flat on the Haygate estate. When it was demolished, the council gave him £172,000 in compensation. All he could afford with that was a smaller place outside of London. So what, how big is this place compared to the, your place at Haygate? Uh, it's probably about a third of the size smaller. And he's now a 45-minute drive from his old community of Elephant and Castle, an area he loved living in. The city, 10 minutes, West End, 15 minutes. Uh, lots of parks locally and my interests. So I loved going over to Charing Cross, the, uh, uh, the bookshops down, uh, down Charles Brown. Yeah. For Terry, it makes it even harder to swallow when he looks at the deal that Lend Lease got from the council. Anything that's been built down there, up to now, to me, only built benefits the investors that have purchased these properties of, of Lend Lease. And the ratepayers are yet to see any benefits either. So the council sold this land to Lend Lease for £50 million. But it's already cost the council more than that in compensation, relocation, and other costs. There is an agreement between Lend Lease and Southwark to split profits 50 50 once they reach a certain level. But while Lend Lease boasts in its annual reports it's already making a profit on Trafalgar Place, Peter John can't even tell us whether the council has got any share of that profit. I don't know the answer to that. 
I, I, I don't know the answer. There have been stage payments as I said. Because I've been told they haven't, you haven't got any profits back here. There's been no share of the profits return. Uh, I, I, I don't know, Steve. I'd have to look into that and come back to you with an answer uh, on that. Because there are reports that I've seen that say the council won't see any of the profits till at least 2025. Is that right? It depends when the project you know, reaches profit and reaches kind of the, the agreed profit lines. Um, so, you know, you, you could say it won't be till 2025, it could be 2021, it could be 2019. But the developer has told Lateline profits won't come back to Southwark until 2025, 15 years after the contract was signed. No one from Lend-Lease was available for interview, but in a statement a spokesman said, We are currently three years into an estimated 12-year build program and the overage calculation will be undertaken after the completion of the whole development not after each phase. I don't think Southern Council will ever get any profit out of this. Former resident Jerry Flynn has been researching the contract and publishing details on his blog. He says the deal hasn't been transparent. There hasn't really been um, a balance sheet drawn up of what, the, of what has been gained and what has been lost. There hasn't really been a balance sheet drawn up and presented to the public of how much money has been spent over the last, oh, must be getting on for 20 years now on this regeneration and how much Southwark is getting back. London's property market has become a magnet for foreign investment. But land is scarce. And with councils owning on average 25 to 30 per cent of the land in London, there's pressure on them to knock down old housing estates and sell them to developers. In the case of Elephant and Castle, so the council has been accused of being too close to the developer. The council is too close to Land Lease. There's a revolving door between the council and Land Lease in terms of officers and councillors getting jobs in one and then, then the other. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, you know, uh, I don't know. What, you know why? Why? It, it, perception, but reality, no. Peter John says residents are benefiting from jobs that flow from developments like this. And he believes it will eventually deliver over £100 million profit to the council. But Londoners will have to wait till 2025 to find out whether he's right or not.